Well, as virtual constructs go, this is pretty good. So we know the computer can put us into a world built from your memory, but which memory is it? I'd say prehistoric Earth, not long before I found you living in a cave. Or rather, heard you scream. So you remember this? Not exactly. I was going a bit mad myself at the time. I decided I was a lemon. Ah, oh, yes. You were jumping in and out of a gin and tonic. Well, a lake that thought it was a gin and tonic. Hey, that cloud looks familiar. There aren't any clouds. Not in the sky there aren't, but there is one parked up the slope to your left. Good grief. Come on. Ah, the closer we get, the more it looks like a patch of fog. Well, that pretty much defines a cloud, doesn't it? Let's go in. What's that up ahead? It looks like something sitting on something else. A man on a horse. The horse has no clothes on, but the man is dressed in black. Must be in the media. Should we say something? <coughs> I don't speak horse. He's getting off the horse. Let me do the talking. Knock yourself out. <clears throat> Uh, just who are you and what are you doing here? And who are you and what are you doing here? Sulk. He's got me there. Say something. Anything. Be assertive. Hmm. My name's Ford Prefect. This is Arthur Dent. And as to what we are doing here, just don't ask. I mean, look at the place. You can't. You've got your zarking cloud in the way. Perhaps tone it down a bit. Well, make your mind up. We are here because we are looking for information. And help. And help. Information and help. But we are not doing anything. We are merely being here with a few ancillary activities such as wandering into your zarking cloud. Anything else you want to know, or shall I just keep shouting at random? So, do you feel you're in the right place? Um... Or in the wrong place? Well... Either way, you should have contacted me sooner. We didn't contact you. No, you didn't. Look, we have a couple of questions. Really? We don't even know who you are. I am a consultant in these matters. Ah. Um... I see. What are you talking about? What matters? Everything. Life, the universe, etc. With particular reference to the problem of where things ought to be. That is my special field. Ah, that sounds promising. Good. Here. Oh, thank you. What is it? Yes. What is it? It's a piece of paper. With writing on? You just pulled it out of thin air. Was that magic? Hyper-infrastructural tempothetonic transference. Not magic. I pulled it out of a different point in time and space, or rather the same point. If you believe that all points in time and space are equal and simultaneous, I don't myself, but then I know more about it than anyone else. Right. Tell me where you think it ought to be. I can put it back just as easily, anywhere, any when. If I put it as I can, now, like that into the wrong person's pocket on one of the planets of the Allied Republics of Gognagama. Gogna... Another galaxy, you wouldn't know it. Then I can guarantee you that within hours, 537,000 billion people would be dead. It has the secret firing codes for their weapon system. If, however, I were to bring it back and send it to a redemption center on Langaba 3, only 30 light years from here, I could get a free pop-up toaster. See? But what is that piece of paper really? As I say, that depends where it ought to be. It was once a bill for roof repairs. A bill? For roof repairs, addressed to one Frob Gronter, an amphibious life form in financial trouble in the minor Magellanic clouds. The shock sent him into a mental hospital where he met a female with similar difficulties. Together they composed the greatest comic operas their world had ever known. What? I was talking about where things ought to be. This piece of paper first, then you. There are things you should understand. We live in an infinite universe. At least you do. I live nearby. Hang on. If the... Skip it. In an infinite universe, there are infinite possibilities. Yes? Yes, okay. And therefore, an infinite number of things this piece of paper can mean. Yes? And what it means depends on where it is. Yes? Could you just assume that whatever you say, we agree? So? Where do you think this piece of paper ought to be? 
Honestly, I don't know. And I can't really pretend to understand what you're talking about. But you see, the complexity of the matter, the skill and judgment that the disposition of things requires if life is to have meaning. Ah, uh, yeah? So where do you think this piece of paper ought to be? I have no idea. What if I put it in the breast pocket of your dressing gown? So. What in God's name am I supposed to do with it? God. Well, there isn't a God. Ah, is that so? I had wondered. Well, you can stop wondering now because there isn't one. Right. Cold fact. Very well. Nasty things happen, nice things happen, not many, but they do. People should just get on and make the best, yes? I'm sure you're right. And people comfort themselves with the idea of a god. Pathetic, weak, woolly-minded idiots. Too weak to face up to reality. God, what a stupid idea! Yeah, I think you made your point. If there is such a thing as a god, may he strike me down where I stand! Now, I don't want you jumping to any conclusions. Did that just happen? Yep. Computer, bring us back to reality. Well? Well what? Did it work? Did you get any useful information? Complete waste of time. No, hang on. I've still got the piece of paper. What does it say? Good grief. Let me see. Seek and you shall find. Find what? I'm guessing a very overpriced roof repair company in the minor Magellanic clouds. Attention all passengers. Please assemble on the bridge. We are entering the atmosphere of the planet Nano. You should go. In the original manuscript of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, there is a section going over the history of the Dentrassi. This was reworked into one of John Lloyd's guide entries. Funnily enough, aside from slightly condensing some of it, very little has changed, as the end states they have nothing to do with the story at hand, which applies both to the original book and to the story of In Another Thing slash the hexagonal phase. The history of the Dentrassi is rather curious. They are directly descended from the medico-technocratic caste of the Rinsul White planet in the Fluorod star cloud. The major achievements of Rinsul White lay in the fields of atomic physics, ice skating and most of all dentistry, a science which they developed to unsurpassed levels of technical sophistication and hygiene. Most of the population were of course miserable as sin, but had always assumed that this was a perfectly normal and healthy feature of any perfectly normal guilt-ridden society. The original Dentrassi were the highest caste on the planet and were all research dentists. They inhabited huge gleaming white glass tower blocks from which they would issue long and frightening lists of all the things that had been newly discovered to be bad for the teeth. This way they kept the entire population and themselves in a state of perpetual terror. Sweets were banned, then alcohol, then meat, then most forms of sex, smoking, breathing through the mouth and excess talking. Even collecting antique vases was said to give you cavities. This could not go on forever and in the end the day dawned when every conceivable activity had been investigated and found dentally damaging and the Dentrassi couldn't find anything to add to the terrible list. The whole planet waited in a state of frozen panic until one young Dentrassi struck the coup de grace by coming up with the magical notion that toothpaste was also bad for the teeth. At that point, something in the racial psyche snapped, and the Dentrassi were thrown into exile on a nearby primitive jungle planet and told to rethink their lifestyle. This they did. Within a generation, they had become the most hedonistic, garlic-gummed good-time layabouts this side of the Gorse Nebula. It's a great pity that they hardly feature in this story at all. So, 